It was not common for a woman to be an artist that was in demand or that was famous in the way that Vijay Lebrun was. Everyone wanted their portrait done by Vijay Lebrun. This was a feat that no one else could have accomplished. Elizabeth Vigée Le Bras was one of the most prominent artists of 18th century France. Because of her natural talent, as well as her connections to the many artists in the circle of her family, she was able to break into the court pretty early and with some incredible portraits done at a young age, including the beautiful portrait of her mother that she did when she was only in her early 20s. Vigée Le Bras's portrait of her mother, I think, in some ways foreshadows much of what would make her such a successful society portraitist. There's an intimacy, there's a spontaneity. She's able to convey so convincingly all of these different textures, fur, fabric, flesh. I think particularly her portraits of women are incredibly touching. You really see them for who they are. They aren't stiff. They're, they're real people, even if they're in these wonderfully loud, big costumes. France in the Ancien Regime was a period of extravagance, and Vigée Lebrun's portraits, especially from that early part of her career, really convey that exuberance. However, she had a softness, an ability to bring out the human side, even in figures as towering as Queen Marie Antoinette, whom she painted multiple times. From the time that Vigée Lebrun first portrayed Marie Antoinette, she became sort of the preeminent court portraitist. Queen Marie Antoinette and Vigée Lebrun, in fact, became very close friends and confidants. There was no other artist that she felt as comfortable with. Now, of course, that became a problem when the revolution came. When the French Revolution breaks out, Vigée Lebrun is forced to flee France. She travels first to Florence and then to Rome, and that is where she paints this spectacular self-portrait. One of my favorite pieces in the sale, and in fact, one of my favorite pieces by Vigée Lebrun that we've ever had the opportunity to offer. Executed on gray paper, the nuance of tonality that she's able to achieve with such a limited color palette is absolutely sensational. She's shown wearing traveling clothes, and you can see how sort of austere her clothing is compared to her earlier portraits. And I think in part, that was a conscious effort trying to sort of distance herself from the court of Marie Antoinette, from Versailles. Vigée Lebrun would then spend the next 12 years traveling around Europe. She was in Prague, she was in Russia, she was in England, and everywhere she went, she was able to find an incredible success. I think that Vigée Lebrun, as a woman and as a mother, had a unique ability to depict children. There's such a vulnerability in these pieces, a, a tenderness. You just can feel that, that they are real children that Vijay really held them or, or knew what it was like to hold a baby, which many artists at the time who were painting children might not have. We often think of Vijay Lebrun as a portraitist, which she certainly was, but she also explored the genre of landscape. The richness of the pastels that she uses in these conveys a real atmospheric quality. If you look at these pieces, you wouldn't have guessed they were from around 1800, 1810, you could think they were a century later, done by artists in Monet's circle, painting in plein air. This fabulous collection sort of shows us her entire artistic development. It is so rare to see a collection that embodies the versatility and talent of a single artist in such a comprehensive way. This speaks to the incredible eye of Joseph Bayo who has spent his life studying Vijay Lebrun and sharing her story with the world.